Hi, everybody. My name is Jaden. My name is Eli. My name is Jason. And my name is Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. We and we are glad you're here. We appreciate your time. And we know that you could be doing a tremendous amount of things. I'm sure that one-eyed sleep snatcher on the wall has a lot of programming in it. And a lot of people are watching that. And that's why a lot of people went out and did a lot of stupid things. Um, snake bite included, right? Uh, they shouldn't do that. It's bad to get bit by the snake. For those with eyes to see and ears to hear, you guys know what I'm talking about. And I hope you guys are doing totally well. And we are working on what, gentlemen? We are working on finding commands of the Torah. Yes, and Eli, you have some pictures here for us of some stuff that we've been yep. looking through. And go ahead and uh, guide us through this. This is what we talked about. Actually, we didn't talk about it. It's not going to be posted yet. I, this, when, oh, when it, will be, it will be. So we are doing this a couple nights ahead of this. So this is going to be Friday morning. So everybody, it is preparation day out there. I hope you guys are getting prepared for Shabbat. Um, but we're recording this prior to that, so it's really not for us yet so anyway this is what we just talked about you guys would have already heard this lesson and um run me through this jobs so we were going over the priestly garments about he had zoom in as you so run on his shoulders these were onyx stones with uh six names of the tribe of Israel on each side and then on his chest here he had a stone and a name inscription for each Real tribe hot. each tribe got a special uh different type of stone and we read that in last night in last night's chapter in 28 and so, and then he has a little hat with, uh, like, it has gold around it, and he has the blue in it, and it's supposed to be a turn on I think this is for the high priest. This is actually the high priest. We got... Right, because he has the shoulder pads and that, so it doesn't look too heavy. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look too heavy here. We got uh, the sensor. We haven't actually got the sensor yet. Um, we got the ephod, which is, like, it's like almost like the overgarment, and then there's another piece undergarment, the robe, and the bells, and pomegranates, which are all around this thing. I assume they make little clinking noises to know the person's alive. And then the fine linen tunic. So he's got a decent amount of clothes on. It's going to get pretty hot in that. Um, yeah, he's also going to be real chinglingy, right, with the bells. Yeah, they are bells, and that's they're hooked all around him to make sure that when he stops moving, he's probably dead. One thing I'd like to mention here is the onyx stones. We actually do not know how large these were. It actually does not state. So unless uh, someone actually found them or has, like, an archaeological uh, relic of them or something, we really don't know how large they were. Yeah. He's got to engrave six names on that. That just kind of looks like kind of small engraved six names on each side. But we don't know how awesome these engravers are. And they've been super small. New school engravers can engrave stuff really super small. All right, Eli, next. Uh, next, we have the altar. All right, so we have the altar, and on the four corners of the altar, we have horns. And um, yeah, that's the, that's the ultimate killing machine. So right basically, there. you put right, the animal in the machine. center of that? Yeah, the animal goes in the center of it, right? And so we have the staves coming up on the side. Uh, the center was what was the network, what was like the mesh, where basically the grill where you cook on it. Yeah, and so this thing, you know, I know they coated it in brass and things of that nature, but still inside, whatever it was made of is going to get super, super hot. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how that's going. I think that's so uh, that uh, they can f bring the fire up underneath of it. I don't know exactly how uh, it Yeah, it's got to be uh, able to I withstand so. heat. If you guys uh, saw the other video where we had the end times hot water machine, uh, we put bars under it and they all melted. So yeah. we even filled them with concrete and they still melted. So that's got to be something that can sustain the fire. Yes. Here we have a, a version of the ark. I don't know what this fence is. They never mentioned like a fence around it, so that might not be quite accurate. Or the picture on the front either. Yeah, I don't think there's supposed to be anything on the side. That looks like a, I don't know, like a mountain maybe. It's a Jew Some, covenant. Yeah. Here I think it would be a little more accurate. We still don't have like the designs. I don't know what all these designs are. I think it was just like gold box, really. Yeah, and I don't know if the staves would be at the bottom of that. Wouldn't they be up a little we, higher? Yeah, so we, that's what we were talking about because they'd be just weirdly, weirdly off balance because you got a heavy lid up top. I think it'd be more in the center. And then here's what we have for the tabernacle, the, the temple. We have the fence. We have how it was built. We have basically the covering that went over it. I don't see any like of the colored uh, linen on these walls. It might be on the inside here. I think there should be on some on the outside as well. Is that a pig in there? No, no those are little cows. I think it's cows. Yeah, look at that. That's a sheep. Oh, sheep. Okay. That, that, that kind of looks like a pig, but I don't think it's so. A pig from side. And are those the are those the pets of the tribe? No. <laughs> Well, they were at one point, I assume, but now they're the yeah. sacrificial lambs. Um, there's just some, I think, slaughtering tables. Then we have the, the basin. Here I is the bowl next to the guy here, and the cows is like I think with a basin to wash hands. You have the altar, I think, where you did the sacrificing. I don't know what this uh, kind of a ramp next to it is. I to get up in that thing, man. It's probably to help. <laughs> They're all some, short. Look at the big the things. Got some funky designs here. I don't know if that's actually yeah. biblically accurate, but that's kind of the closest we have to find here. 
Okay, and so yes, we are continuing on and we are at 49 commands right now. And so before we continue on, let me see if I can get this up correctly now this time. You have to I'm going to throw it right here and go right here. And then when this thing doesn't let me down and goes kabang like this, then I will go right here. Okay, so the X is 29. This is what we will do. And so um, 29 1. And this is the thing that you shall do unto them to hollow it, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish, and matzah and matzah cakes tempered with oil, and matzah wafers anointed with oil of wheat and flour shall you make them. Okay, I got to move my other one up here. And you shall put them in one, into one basket and bring them into the basket with the bullock and the two rams. And Aaron and his sons you shall bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly and shall wash them with water. Eli, you uh, scroll the top thing as I'm rolling it. Here, uh. no, okay, hey, that'll probably work. Uh, I'm on four here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Five. And five. And you shall take the garments and put upon Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastplate and gird him with the belt of the ephod. And you shall put the turban up on his head and put the holy crown up on the turban. You know, you gotta like roll up your yeah, son. Yeah, it's not like going. Then shall you take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. And you shall bring his sons and put coats upon them. And you shall gird them with belts, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them. And I think the bonnets. The turbans. Turbans. Bonnets on them. And the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. And you shall consecrate Aaron and his sons. So mine says uh, for the perpetual statute. Mine is an everlasting law. Perpetual statute. Yeah, so everlasting law. That's, I think, the same. It's everlasting. Thing. Yeah. And you shall cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the assembly. And Aaron and his son shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock. And you shall kill a bullock before Yahuwah by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. Now, we've gone over this before, but, I mean, this is a... There's there's no other way to kill this thing except cut its throat, right? right. So I mean they're gonna they're all cut it's like a vein in its neck or something of the sort and bleed it out. Maybe a little more gentler way. Supposedly they have a way to calm the animals before they kill them. I don't know if that is true, but I guess the the uh, Yisraelites were the masters of the kill, where you calm a lamb, make it all happy as they can be, and then kill it. So anyway, it is brutal, and you know all I can say is thank Yah for his son, so we don't have to do this stuff. Okay. 12. Uh, did I hit 11? Yes. And you shall kill the bullock before Yahuwah by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And you shall take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with your finger and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. And you shall take all the fat that covers the inwards and the call that is above the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is up on them and burn them on the altar. So mine says the appendage on the liver. Okay. The call. So the appendage on the liver. And so that must be like the... Uh, the stuff that's hanging around the liver is my guess. Um, 14, right? Mm -hmm. But the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shall you burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. It's outside the camp, so. Right, without the camp. Yeah, outside the camp. Okay, and you shall also take one ram, and Aaron and his son shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. And you shall slay the ram, and you shall take his blood and sprinkle it around about upon the altar. And you shall cut the ram in pieces and wash the inwards of him and his legs and put them unto his pieces and unto his head. And you shall burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is an ascending smoke offering unto Yahuwah. It is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And so this is what we talked about before is why would our creator have all this stuff doing this? And I, we, we talked about it, right? It's It's a... It's a sweet smell. It's like us when we walk into a kitchen and smell cinnamon rolls or smell something like super good. And um, it's appeasing, right? And you shall take the other ram, and Aaron and his son shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Then you shall kill the ram and take of his blood and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron and upon the tip of the right ear of his sons and upon the thumb on their right hand and upon the great toe of their right foot and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. Now... Guys, we played around in blood 
What are some characteristics of blood? Uh, it gets wet. It can be sticky. It gets really sticky. It, it can doesn't start, smell it, right. Yeah, there's, it, it's like it's, like it gets clotty-like. It gets... Uh, there's hardening up. Yeah, and especially after... Never mind. I'm not going there. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's, yeah, there's, no, a lot I, of, I there's a lot of clots going around, let's just say. Right? And um, it's not the good kind. Um, so we have a ton of bad things with blood, right? And what are, what are, what does y'all say to do with blood if we have it? Uh, he basically cover it up. Cover it up because cover up, he wants to why aren't we to drink the blood? Well, life is in the blood. There's like some special properties in the blood you should not be drinking. So does that mean you should not get a blood transfusion? Um, I don't, I don't think you drink blood when you do a tr blood transfusion, so I don't think so. I don't know. I, I, I don't think, I, I think, I think there's some religions out there that will not allow for a blood transfusion. So if you're like bleeding open and you need blood immediately, what what happens? So you're, you, the only thing is, is you would take somebody else's blood of the same kind, hook yourself up to it, and they'd start jamming you full of their blood. Yeah, is that, if, you, if you're going to die, do you, you what do they do a, back Is in that the day? a sin or not? Well, I mean, they wouldn't be able to do that back in the day. They I guess they just let them bleed out. That'd be it. Yeah, that'd that'd be, a good question. It'd be game over, right? So, I don't have an answer to that one. I don't have an answer. Is that okay to have a blood transfusion? I don't know. I mean... Right now, I'd say great if, you, questions, huh? if uh, I wouldn't do it now is the way the world is. Um, no, you don't want to go to the dudes with the little snakes going up the poles? No, I wouldn't say get a blood transfusion. The blood is kind of uh, a little corrupted right now. Yeah, you would um, not. Back, back a couple years ago, I mean, if you were bleeding out, you needed blood, I would say probably go save your life. Um, so I'm just saying a fact. I mean, please don't strike me. I'm just saying that um, they will not accept the blood of folks nowadays. I mean, uh, back in my days, we... Uh, my mom used to sit in this little chair and she would have a blood drive at least like, I don't know, like every 30, 90 days or something like that. We would go and we would sit there. And the only cool thing about this whole thing is I get a plate of cookies and orange juice. But so good. it was creepy because everybody, you, this is how they do it in the United States is you go and you sit in a chair and they, they pull you back and they give you like a ball thing to like squeeze on and then they jam you. The problem with me is I have really super deep veins, and so all I could never even give blood like that. And every nurse I've ever jammed up, you guys have seen it, uh, they cannot find my veins. And so I would be a terrible um, guy that had to have needles in my veins all the time. I just I can't find them. So that goes back to the question, Eli. Um, Nicole, I think, anyone? I think it's okay. What is like a very the what blood. is a sacred thing? What is a very? Like, is I a don't very, have an answer. Like because. Back in the days, they didn't have the technology. But I think they were saving the, someone's life. They didn't have right. technology. They didn't have ability to. Uh, but you're corrupting blood. Yeah, you have like people have their own blood types, right? People have their own. There's everyone is special with their own type of blood, right? I mean, there right, may be O a, plus, B, but, a, B, but everyone is unique to you. There's no. my wife says there's no C's, so there's A B's, A B O, A B. There's, there's something else. O positive, O yeah. negative, R um, H. Rh or something of the sort. Rh is what. So, but if you can, if you put a like a B blood goes into A. There's like some kind of blood that you can put into everybody, and there it's like it's just okay. But if you put the wrong kind of blood in somebody, it like kills them up. It's like no good. Yeah. So the question is, does anyone know? No. I don't have an answer. I mean, they didn't have the technology back in the days, or they would be sitting there with blood transfusion. I assume if like their warriors were down and someone needed blood, I would assume they would patch them up and have the person next to them give blood. But now we have technology. Back, that, but in, the, I don't back in the days, you wouldn't be able to tell what kind of blood it was. You would not That's know. right. They didn't have the technology to do any of that. But now we do. So I don't know. Blood is a sacred thing. And I guess that's all I have the answer for is blood is a sacred thing. I don't know if y'all would allow that or not. Um, I would say right now is the state of the world is in. Don't, no. Don't do not do that. But uh, you might take in some blood that clots you up or something. Yeah, there might be some problems. <laughs> um, I, uh, I don't have an answer for it either. If all right, an here. Let's, take, let's take a vote. Yeah, let's take a vote here. Shall we allow transfusions in our tribe? No. Uh, no, amongst ourselves or well, like, yeah. Or, I mean, would you? Would you, you're, it doesn't matter whose blood it is. Would you take a shot of blood? I mean, if like if some someone here, so, yes. someone here was needed blood, and I had the same blood type, I would give them blood to keep them alive. Right? That's the natural human thing is to want to save the people you love. Is it the right thing to do? I don't know. I don't <laughs> have the answer. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Anyone out there? All right. Um, okay, so let's roll. What are we at? Twenty. Yeah, like, yeah actually, twenty-one. 21. Okay, and you shall take of the blood that is upon the altar and of the anointing oil and sprinkle it upon Aaron and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon the garments of his sons with him and he shall be hollowed and his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. All right, so that's that's actually where I was going with the entire blood thing is um, 
this is a little strange. I mean, well, I mean, it seems strange to us. They're taking like some blood, right? They're, they're like, sticking on your on ear, cells. sticking on your toe. They're sprinkling it everywhere. Um, I mean, there's gonna be like sprinkles of blood. It's it is maybe odd. it's some kind of like purification thing or something because like you you do that for sin offering or something. So. Well, it's the blood, and that's the blood of our Messiah is the only thing that could could save. Yeah, so maybe like putting it, putting it on them was significant to that. Maybe putting like washing themselves in it. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, and I mean it's just it's really it it's, sucks. You're I, gonna be around. You're gonna be in blood all day long. It's terrible. You're gonna be slaughtered. Slaughtering it was one thing. Actually getting it. I mean, I've cut it to where it like goes all over us, like in our face and mm-hmm. stuff. <laughs> Especially when you use a a, a uh, what saw do we use on that one thing? Hacksaw. No, we no, used a hacksaw. We used a sawzall. Sawzall. Yes, we used a sawzall on, on a, a sawzall also frozen cow. cow. Reciprocating saw. A re- reciprocating saw. Yeah, so it's it's a little it's, weird. But anyway, yeah. we're just trying to get to the whole bottom of this blood thing, and it is it is weird, right? The sanctification cleansing part of this involves killing an animal, grabbing us, draining us blood, and then sprinkling it everywhere. So, here we go. 22. And you shall take of the ram the fat and the rump and the fat that covers the inwards and the call above the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is up on them and the right shoulder, for it shall be a ram of consecration. Okay, so here we have... right shoulder? It says right shoulder. It says right thigh. Right thigh. It says right thigh in the NIV as well. And the king... Um, Yeah, I don't know. These guys, shoulder, thigh, I mean... What? Maybe for an animal, uh, it's the, pretty the similar. The king says shoulder. shoulder. Huh? The king says shoulder. The king says shoulder. So the king says shoulder and everyone else says thigh. Okay, well, we, uh, we'd we probably get smoted down, so why we shouldn't be uh, offered sacrifices? Because yep. we can't even like, I mean, get the translation. What I'm noticing is uh, this is very close to Sefer. King the king? Is only, like, the it names came, are It came from the same stuff, right? So they use the same uh, Ro- sources. Ro- yeah. But it, doesn't, but it doesn't have, like, the thou the and... The Septuagint's older than the Masoretic text that was used for Sefer. Masoretic. Masoretic. I don't know Okay. That. Okay, so here we roll, and so we're off to 23. Um, but anyway, before we go into that last one that we just did, the right shoulder. So it's only, it's whatever it is, the right thigh or shoulder, On whatever right it is. right side of the body. So we just split the animal up, right? And so we basically took the, the ram, the fat, and it's buttocks area and the fat that covers the inwards so what would that be the fat that covers the inwards if we're, we're we, we we've slaughtered cows before and so the the fat the i don't uh, know what would that be so after you go through the skin is it that oh no it's i don't like, think it's the white it's like stuff. A, there's a little layer of skin i mean there's, there's skin and there's a layer of skin that's connected to it i think that's the fat um but there is fat though i mean in obi the cow that we have that we killed uh, there is fat, so I don't know what that would be. But anyway, um, there's certain, and the liver and the kidneys, uh, and the fat that's upon them. So all the fat that is surrounding the ins- inwards, and then one piece of it, like the right thigh or shoulder, whatever it is. And so it's a separate, different kind of a, a sacrifice here. It's the ram of consecration. So anyway, there's, it's, they're separating it. Continue on. And one loaf of bread and one cake of oiled bread and one wafer out of the basket of matzah that is before Yahuwah. So anyway, we have what? Now we have cows and we have bread. Bread. Right? And so Yah's having kind of a meal of smelling stuff. But the problem is, you know, if you put the bread in there, I don't know how they put the bread in there. You're just going to burn it. It's going to start smelling really bad like when we burn stuff. So I don't know if they maybe just cooked the, the, the dough up and they made it sweet-smelling bread or do they burn it to a crisp. Yes, and it, it doesn't smell very good. Yeah, it doesn't smell good. And if we're created in the image of Yah, I'm sure we have the same kind of senses as far as nose smelling and things of that nature, is, is my thoughts. Okay, 24. And you shall put in put all in the hands of Aaron and in the hands of his sons and shall wave them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. And you shall receive them of their hands and burn them up upon the altar for an ascending smoke offering for a sweet savor before Yahuwah. It is an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And you shall take the breast of the ram of Aaron's consecration and wave it for a wave offering before Yahuwah, and it shall be your part. So this is just, this is yet another piece, right? But this part of the offering doesn't have any of the innards or any of the other stuff. It's just the breast, which would just be the chest area of the cow. And, um, you know, when you, I don't know how, it'd be so interesting to see this go down. It'd be gross, but it'd be interesting. And this is only interesting to us because we've, we've slaughtered cows. Okay, 27. And you shall sanctify the breast of the wave offering 
and the shoulder of the heave offering, which is waved, and which is heaved up of the ram of the consecration, even of that which is Aaron, for Aaron, and that which is for his sons. And it shall be Aaron's, son, Aaron's and his sons by a statue forever from the children of Yashrael, for it is a heave offering. It shall be a heave offering from the children of Yashrael of the sacrifice of their peace offerings, even their heave offering unto Yahuwah. And the holy garments of Aaron shall be his sons after him to be anointed therein and to be consecrated in them. And that son that is priest in his stead shall put them on seven days when he comes into the tabernacle of the assembly to minister in the holy place. And you shall take the ram of the consecration and seethe his flesh in the holy place. Now there's that ram of consecration again. Um, we've taken out chunks of him. And it's, it's talking here about seethe his flesh. Why does cook his flesh? Right. Boil. See, okay, boil, seethe. So we're t I don't know which flesh are we talking about. I mean, because there's flesh all over this stuff. Is it just the meat that's left? Okay, well, let's see. What I don't think it's the we're skin. Apart, so we have like the front legs and less the shoulder. Um, so we basically have like the legs left. Uh, see his flesh. How much flesh? What kind of flesh? All right. So oh, you also have around the cow as well, around his ribs and stuff. Yeah, well, they did the chest. I mean, so it said... the chest, but you have the bottom area. Right, the bottom the top, or the well. top by the spine. The rump. Well, the Sorry. rump already rump went off on the other one. Right. All right, so anyway, hit... The tail. The tail. We could do the tail, I, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and Aaron and his son shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. So there's some bread that didn't get burned up. So we know that they probably just used it, at, you know, and baked bread, regular bread. And they shall eat those things wherewith the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them. But a stranger shall not eat thereof because they are holy. And if aught of the flesh of the consecrations or of the bread remain until the morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten because it is holy. Okay. So I, mean, I guess you, I don't know if these guys are really fat. These guys might just be really fat people. Because, I mean, they're eating, eating a, a lot. lot. There's a lot it's of like food It's like 24-7 meat. Yeah, and, 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 and it's, it's a consistent thing, I mean, right? they, there was a lot of yish, uh, a lot of uh, Levites to feed, so. Yeah, but they had a party with some of these animals. I mean, there's a lot, so, I mean, this is. I mean, okay, so when someone brought an animal, they slaughtered immediately, or they just, like. They might have had a courtyard where they kept them. Yeah, there had to be a, uh, some sort of chain of command or something of the sort. Like, I mean, there had to be, like, people standing out there with their cows for miles on end like or something. Or they yeah. brought them, and they had, like, a crowd where they kept them. They said, all right, sacrifice time. I mean, you're going to know at the end of the day how many animals can you slaughter here, and you're going to be looking out at like 4.30 or something, you're going, all right, I can only get another 40 cows in or something, well, or rams. Get, well, I mean, okay, how many sons do we have here? Is yeah. The thing. It's like, how many people can cut? Each group only did it for a week. So right. So they traded off weekly. Right. Yeah, but there's, I mean. I wonder if they the, enjoyed it. I wonder if they enjoyed it. Killing animals? Like, eat all the eating the, uh. I mean, killing animals is like a normal thing back then. They had to kill animals to eat. Well, everybody should. Their grocery stores weren't even invented until like 1946. There were like marketplaces where they could... Right, but like you wouldn't... I mean, you wouldn't buy a little pound of hamburger. You, you might. Mm. <laughs> there might you be. might look back and they might just grab right off the cow or something of the sort <laughs> as is mooing. Okay, here we go again. And so we are 35. And thus shall you do unto Aaron and to his sons according to all things which I have commanded you. Seven days shall you cons consecrate them. And you shall offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for atonement. And you shall cleanse the altar when you have made an atonement for it. And you shall anoint it and sanctify it. Break okay. it like the pressure wash. Yeah, clean that off. Because that gets bloody and nasty. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing. It's going to be a bloodbath. All the way down to clinging. The whole thing is going to be They were like mad water. killers, mad eaters, and mad cleaners. Yeah, do not mess with the Israelites, dude. If they kill this many stuff, they could definitely wipe out villages. of No problem. Break out the steak knives. Yeah. Seven days you shall make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it. And it shall be an altar most... Most holy, whosoever touches the altar shall be holy. And this is that which you shall offer up on the altar. Two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at the evening. And with the one lamb, a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of a hin of beaten oil, and the fourth part of a hin of wine for a drink offering. Okay, so there's there's wine in this as well. So it's not just they uh, weren't thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> They got, they got drinks as well. And the other lamb you shall offer at evening and shall do thereto according to the oblation of the morning and according to the drink offering thereof for a sweet savor and offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. 
This shall be a continual ascending smoke offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly before Yahuwah, where I will meet you to speak there unto you. And I will meet with the children of Yashrael, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the assembly and the altar. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. And I will dwell among the children of Yashrael and will be their Elohim. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah Elohim, that brought them forth out of the land of Mitzram, that I may dwell among them. I am Yahuwah Elohim. Okay, gentlemen, that concludes our wrap up for this chapter. Any comments? Not no, for us. Not for uh, Levites. The future Levite dads uh, definitely think you should study and know because you might be a Levite one day having to do this. Yeah, you might. we might need to like bring back fire or something like uh, sacrifices. I don't know. I hope um, not. Not with Yahushua. Um, Jay, take me through what it means to follow Yahushua. Follow Yahushua. Is, you, Who is Yahushua first? Yahushua is the son of Yahuwah. As many people know him, most people know him as Jesus. He, that was not his true name because there are no J's in Hebrew, but his name was Yahushua or Yahusha, something closer to English Joshua. He uh, died for our sins. This is the final lamb because the, the sacrifice weren't right anymore. He, they needed redemption of sins. So he, Yahushua, died for a true redemption of sins, true forgiveness. And following him is believing that he died for our sins, that he died for our iniquities of breaking the Torah, and we have redemption in him. And we must follow what he says. If not, there's no reason to believe in him because we have no, we don't need redemption if there's nothing to sin against. Eli, what did he teach and what did he believe, the son of the, the Most High? He said, well, he said, if you love me, keep my commands. And his commands were his father's commands, which was the Torah, which we are going over. He only had two commandments. That's what the Christians will say. Those are the two greatest commandments from the Torah that everything in the Torah is part of. All the sacrifices, honor Yahuwah with all your heart, everything about that is part of the Torah, is loving Yahuwah, and the other part is about honoring your neighbor. So you're saying the very first commandment is to love our Creator, Yahuwah, with all our heart, mind, and soul, and you're saying the second commandment is to love our neighbor as ourself. Those are the greatest commandments. Those are the greatest commandments, and all the Torah is what? It hangs on that. Like, those are all like, the, those are the parts of the Torah. Okay, yeah. Caden, if I am sitting here in abomination to our creator how do we get in abomination with our creator what are some things that we could do that we could anger their creator and why uh, uh there are several abominations um the way to anger our creator is to disobey what he says is to uh not do as he had told us to do which was keep my commands and all of his commands that are in the torah right we have basic things but jesus I mean, died and put all the law on the cross son uh, he said he didn't he um there's only one, uh, there, Yeshua never lied. He says he did not come to destroy the Torah. Uh, if you read the end of Luke and the beginning of John, he says that all things, he, he came to fulfill what the Torah had said, Aha. which was to fulfill a prophecy. Which fulfilled, was, it's because done. Because Moses had a prophecy towards the end of Deuteronomy where he said that Yeshua would come to save them from their sins, and that was the Torah. And the rain is here, guys. And um, I guess this calls it a wrap up. So it's getting yeah. really super loud, real fast. That's it. Uh, if you guys can still hear us, we love you guys. And um, it got super loud. Shalom. Shalom. Read your Bibles.